Hello there YouTube world, it's me Simon, your budget Monty Don. And if anyone is watching from TV land, I'm cheaper, younger and have 50% more eyebrows. Now check these bad boys out. Now let's be honest, if your tree ferns look like this and you really don't need to look any further on this video, but if yours don't, then I'm gonna tell you the top five mistakes to avoid when growing these things. So, mistake number one. Now this mistake came about by uh, one of our lovely viewers leaving a comment for me, and that was to say this. Um, did you buy your tree fern as a potted plant or did you buy it as a cut log and if so did you plant it upside down you know it's, and it's a great question because you can still buy tree ferns as a cut log it's harvested and then sent over from Tasmania and it ends up on your doorstep and the thing is well I imagine some people may well do that you don't want to plant it upside down because there are no roots at the base that would just be cut and right at the top there all the fronds will just be cut so you can be forgiven for wondering which way is up or well, the easy way to tell is to look at these old petioles you see that they look like thumbs sticking up so you need an upward facing thumb and that way is up hopefully that's uh, that's under that question for you now mistake number two to avoid is watering the wrong part of the tree fern now that might sound a little bit silly but let me explain now, if you didn't know any better, you can be forgiven for thinking that when you water tree ferns, you water down here. Now, there are roots, because there are roots down there, but that's not going to be a very effective way to water tree ferns, because these live in environments that have 3.7 meters of rain every year. So, you need to water the whole thing. And the most important part is the crown, because it's the crown where the roots come from. So, you've got roots from here that travel all the way down the trunk, and down to the bottom so when you're watering you can't just water down here you have to water the crown but before you water that crown you need to water the trunk you need to give this trunk an absolute soaking and really you want to do this once a week give it an absolute soaking all the way around and then you fill it with water at the top there and you keep filling it until you start to see seepage coming out of the trunk this needs one to two liters in the morning one to two liters in the evening, and once a week, as I've just explained, a complete soaking. And now we come to mistake number three, and that is, you're probably not feeding this plant anywhere near enough, and this is why. You see this lovely funnel shape that these uh, fronds create? Well, where they grow in the cloud forest of Tasmania, they're, they're not a um, they're not a top level plant. They're like a, a mid level plant. So in the forest, you get a lot of detritus coming down, landing within that funnel tree, making its way down to the crown, and then creating a little bit of a compost seed, which drip feeds nutrition and fertilizer into the crown and down further into the trunk. Now, when you water these as much as they require, any nutrition that is in the trunk tends to leach out, wash out with all the water that's going in. And what will happen is these, which these fronds that should be a lovely, rich, dark green color, start to go light green. And that's because they don't have enough nitrogen in order to produce the chlorophyll required for these things to grow effectively. So when it comes to feeding, you need to feed like this. So what we do is we make up a double dose of fertilizer. So check the packet that you're using and then make sure that you double up in some cases triple up on the amount of feed that it says and then what you do you fill it with water so it's a water soluble feed which is really what you so when it comes to feeding uh, you don't feed down here which is what you that's what they'd expect you to do you feed them up here you feed them right in the crown don't be shy get that right in there and give it a good good soak in the feed in that and what that does it keeps the feed up here where the crown is active. You've got the new shoots coming out, you've got the roots down here. Now in time, as you water it, that nutrition will start to make its way down to the trunk and eventually it will be in the ground where the roots are. But when you're feeding it, once you've done that really good watering and you want to feed it that double dose, triple dose, that goes in there. Now, as far as mistakes four and five go, I'm going to lump 
those together. And the reason why is because it's to do with both the uh, removal of the fronds and winter protection. Now I know really well qualified horticulturists who overwinter tree ferns by removing all of the old fronds and putting a little bit of frost protection like fleece or leaves in the top there and that's not good enough you don't want to take these off and I'll tell you why because come the spring you need these working you need the you need them in good condition you need them actively producing sugars because these fronds are what power the new fronds from the base but there's another thing you need to know is these old fronds you need to keep those on otherwise you get shrinkage of the trunk here these old fronds they'll be sort of like leaning down pulling back and then and as you can see here i mean these could probably do a bit of a trip you know they, they start uh, they come out and they widen the uh, the girth of the trunk now you're never going to get anything as compact and dense as this because we just don't have the conditions that they would have uh, evolved in but if you uh, if you take these leaves off and don't leave them on as long as you possibly can you're going to struggle to get good fronds coming out the spring and you're going to struggle to keep that girth. And the other issue is winter protection in general. The most important part of the trunk is this top here, this crown. You need to protect it really from here to here and probably like wrap it four times with um, fleece to make sure you've got extra, extra protection. Now the leaves, you also want to sort of um, draw these in together, put a bit of string on them tie them up and then fleece those you want to get again two to three layers of fleece because you want to protect the uh, the trunk that's the most important thing second most important thing is these leaves and uh, you get that right the next year they're going to bounce back like these and you'll have an absolutely huge show of fronds anyway that's all i have for you in this video if you've got any other great uh, comments to make and add those in the comment section we'd love to hear them thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video Thank you.